Humankind has proven to be unique amongst life forms, distinguished not only by its intelligence, morality, and self-awareness, but also by a different side. It is the only creature that kills for sport. The movie begins with a truck slowly making its way towards a gated area tucked deep within a dense forest. Eventually, the truck comes to a halt, and without wasting a second, the driver jumps out of the front seat and hurries around to the back. The driver then opens the back doors, revealing four individuals sitting there, waiting patiently. As the people begin hopping out of the truck, one of the men in the group can't help but voice his hope that this could be the long-awaited chance for them to be set free. After the three men and one woman get out of the car, the oldest of the group, known as Doc, asks the man who had transported them what work they were required to do. Looking at them strangely, the man asks whether they were not told what they were doing there. When he realizes they have no awareness of what is going to happen, he tells them to run as fast as they can and drives away. As soon as the truck leaves, the group sees four men with hunting gear heading their way and realizes they were brought there to be hunted. As they rush through the woods, shots of arrows are fired toward them, and they are forced to duck as they run. A few distance into the woods, Vitor falls to the ground, affected by his already damaged leg. Seeing his friend had collapsed, Kel quickly returned and dragged Vitor onto his feet, hoping to carry him away from the impending danger. Before they could make it a few steps, an arrow pierces through Vitor's back, killing him instantly. Having no choice, Kel is forced to abandon Vitor's body and rushes toward his awaiting friends. The group of hunters approach the fallen body and begin to examine their price. Kneeling, one of the men pulls out a knife and begins to cut up Vitor's chest, revealing a robot skeleton beneath. The men then continue to skin the dead android, leaving it with only the skeletal frame beneath. Proud of his achievement, George stands next to his game and takes a commemorative picture. He then calls his son Eric, who is disgusted by the whole tradition, to be a part of the picture. Seeming unhappy about what he had just witnessed, Eric goes over and stands by his father, unable to hold his tongue that what they were doing was sick. George assures his son that even though they might look like humans, what they were hunting were only androids, and that it was just a long tradition. Continuing what George was saying, Clute, George's brother, tells Eric that he too used to hunt with Eric's grandfather, who had taught him that no animal was not fair game. Collecting their trophy from their hunt, the group continues forward to find the rest of the androids. The guide of the group, Pete, heads out first and manages to trap the androids to explain the rules of the hunt. Realizing he had gotten their attention, Pete tells them that since they were able to make it to the first markup, then they receive the right to have a fighting chance. Mentioning a place located 12 km east, Pete tells them that if any of them make it to the final marker, at the end of the dam, they will be guaranteed complete freedom to live amongst mankind until the end of their days. Seeing they have no questions, Pete gives them a 15 minute head start, watching the androids scurry off. That night, the hunters make camp and enjoy a lavish dinner prepared by Pete, Clute's best tracker. While they're eating, George offers his son some wine, telling him that he will be a man by tomorrow, as he is going to make his first kill as practice for when he is going to take over the family business. Unhappy by the statement, Eric tells his father that he wouldn't be needed as he planned to become an anthropologist. Hoping to change the subject, Eric asks his uncle how they didn't know the androids were already making it to the Haven. Clute explains that the androids are powered by solar energy and wouldn't be able to move much until the sun comes up. After mentioning the fine that awaited them if they ever got caught, Eric asked his father what they would do if the androids decided to fight back. Seeming confident, George explains that the androids have an inhibitor chip that stops them from hurting humans or each other. Out in the woods, the androids are gathered together, unable to continue their journey until the sun comes up. Doc, the repairing technician bot, is fixing the hand of a fellow android named Terra. While he is working, he tells Terra that the new androids being built were self-diagnosing, which rendered his creation absolute. Once he is done, he asks Terra why they had dragged her out there as she seemed to be a functioning android. Tara explains that she had been deemed a malfunctioning bot as she had developed a new habit of stopping what she was doing and staring at things. 
When they turn their attention to Cal, he tells them that he was diagnosed with central processor damage and was having random energy spikes. When Doc mentions the humans' sadistic actions, Cal interjects, explaining that humans knew that androids could not feel pain, therefore their actions weren't sadistic. When he tells the others that humans gave them life and had the right to take it away, Tara, looking at him wearily, tells him that she doesn't believe what he is saying is true. Speaking up for Cal, Doc explains to Tara that Cal had lived amongst humans too long and had been programmed to have all sorts of characters normal androids didn't have. Tara refuses to change her mind about humans being bloodthirsty monsters. The following morning, the androids quickly begin their journey to safety, while the hunters are following their tracks. When the androids finally arrive at a small pond and stop to get a drink of water, the hunters watch them from the top of the hill, making sure to keep quiet. Ak insists that his son sees the bow and arrow, urging him to aim at Tara. However, Eric hesitates, unwilling to participate in this twisted tradition. Instead, he deliberately shoots the arrow away from the androids, alerting them to their presence. As the gravity of the situation dawns upon them, the androids spring into action, realizing they are now in immediate danger. Amidst the chaos, Clute manages to land an arrow on Terra, causing her to stumble. Acting swiftly, Cal rushes to her side and removes the arrow from her wounded shoulder. Together, they make their escape, desperately evading their pursuers. Angry that his son cost them a kill, George begins to yell at Eric, who in turn tells his father that he doesn't want his life to be controlled by him, mentioning that it was the reason Eric's mother left him. Upset that his son could talk back to him like that, George slaps Eric in retaliation. Seeing his brother's actions, Clute threatens George never to do this again, telling him he would answer to him if he did. The android finally made it to a cabin nearby and chose to stay inside for a few moments until Doc could fix Tara's wounded shoulder. Inside the cabin, the androids come across secret blueprints that could help them override the inhibitor chips that would allow them to protect themselves. Quickly studying the blueprint, Doc explains what they must do. Unwilling to be a part of this, Cal tries to stop them from making the changes, but is stopped by the angry Doc who was determined to survive. Opting to wait outside, Cal leaves the cabin while Doc and Tara implement the procedure on each other. Once the procedure is complete, Doc and Tara begin to prepare for the hunter's arrival, while Cal refuses to take part in the mutiny, choosing to read his books instead. Out in the woods, the hunters finally manage to track the androids, but are surprised when they run into a trap set by Doc and Tara. George is minerally hurt by the swinging death trap, but he is saved by Pete before any real damage could be done. Hoping to bandage him up, the group headed to the nearby cabin so that Pete could administer first aid. Confused about what had just happened, George asks Clute why the androids were able to attack them when their programming inhibits them from doing so. After finding the blueprints, the group realizes that the robots have managed to upgrade themselves. Seeing their confusion, Clute reveals that he was the one who left the blueprints blueprints in the cabin so they could have a real hunting experience. Grabbing real guns, Clute and Pete head out to find their prey, leaving a few of their weapons in the jeep. Creating a diversion, the android manages to take two of the hunter's riffles and rush into the forest. Realizing what happened, Clute follows the android tracks and shoots down Doc, hitting him in the back. When Tara and Cal realize that they are the only survivors, Tara tells Cal that they won't make it far unless Cal decides to fight back. Disgusted by what they are doing, Eric walks away and is followed by Pete, who tries to bring him back. Before the two men can return to the group, they are abused by Tara, who forces them to put down their weapons. Choosing a secure location where the other hunters couldn't find them, Tara and Cal begin to communicate with their captures. Cal quickly realizes that Pete was one of them. When he reveals this truth, Pete confesses that he is one of the few androids who have survived the hunt. He tells them that when society wouldn't accept him, he was made to undergo a special procedure that made him compliant and assured them he had never killed one of his own. Telling Tara that she could do whatever she wanted with him, Pete begs her to let Eric 
Terra go as he has never raised a hand against the androids. Taking Cal aside, Terra asks him why he wouldn't let her remove his inhibitor chip, but Cal tells her that he has no explanation. He also reveals that he was the android that saved her life. He tells her that he has damaged his CPU to have a chance to be with her. Touched by his act of bravery, Tara holds Cal's hand and holds it close to her face. The following morning, Pete decides to join the androids and convinces Terra to Eric go after dressing him up in one of their clothes. Assuming they had found the androids, George shoots at him, only later realizing that he had killed his son. Weeping loudly, George cries over his fallen son, blaming Clute for what happened. Angry, Clute goes after the remaining androids, managing to track them down and shooting Tara in the back. Devastated by the loss of the woman he loved, Cal asks Pete to disarm his inhibitory chip and goes after Clute. Forcing him to put down his gun, Cal threatens Clute's life while the older man desperately begs for his life. Refusing to entertain Clute's lies, Cal aims the gun at the man and shoots him, impaling him on a nearby branch. Pete and Cal then rush to the nearby dam where their freedom would be guaranteed. When they finally reach the end, they are met with the hunting warden, who tells Cal that he was free to join humanity as he was subjected to an illegal hunt. Refusing to be part of humanity, Cal attempts to kill himself, but Pete and the warden stop him. Telling him to stand there, the warden makes a call, telling the others that they have an android needing the special procedure. After the procedure, Cal is seen as a new tracker, informing new androids of the ground rule of the hunt. 